There are things that you can do. And the, to me, the reason I mentioned the lipid panel is because that's one thing, that's, that's real data you can get that's available to you. Yeah, it's really interesting. We got an email through our website over the weekend from a guy who had read the book already. And I say already because the book's only been out about 10 days. And it's as you know, it's not yeah. the shortest book. Um, nevertheless, the guy read the book and immediately and went and had uh, his LP little a checked. Now, LP little a is a is a, a lipid that most people aren't aware of. It's a lipoprotein most people aren't aware of, yet it's the most common hereditary uh, uh, cause of cardiovascular disease. He went and had his checked and it was uh, a little bit elevated. Not hugely elevated, but but certainly elevated. Uh, his ApoB, which is another lipid we talk about, was also slightly elevated, but not enough that anybody would have cared. But a CT angiogram revealed a 90% occlusion in um, the main artery that runs down the left ventricle. Um, interestingly, this guy's a remarkable athlete, uh, you know, has done several Ironman. And in the past, he'd even complained a little bit of chest pain, but it was never taken seriously because how would you take that seriously in a 41-year-old who's a, you know, as fit as a fiddle? And there are lots of other reasons why, you know, people have chest pain, especially young, um, healthy, athletic people. To make a long story short, he ended up requiring two stents in his uh, left anterior descending artery over the weekend and um, just wanted to write us to tell us, you know, hey, thank you for, you know, alerting me to all this stuff so I could go out and get this done. And, and in some ways that's a success story, but in some ways it's a tragedy, right? It's a tragedy in that, you know, why aren't we checking LP little a on everybody in their teenage years? Because there's a lot that can be done about this if you catch this early. You know, it makes me think because Abby knows my assistant every year because my dad died at 45 and I know you've had lots of early death thanks to cardiovascular disease in your family, which I now believe was like, there was a reason for it. It gave you, it gave us, you, determined to look into these issues. Um, but yeah, so my dad died of a sudden heart attack at age 45. So I, every year I go for uh, a stress test and Abby's always got to give me the 30 day warning because I do exercise <laughs> going into my stress test, Peter. <laughs> I'm defrauding Just myself. Study for the test. <laughs> yes, it's very sad. But um, in any event, now I'm wondering, what am I doing? Am I, why am I getting, you know, the stress? It's the real stress test with you're hooked up to the monitor and you have, you get yeah. down right after you do the 13 minutes and they check your breathing. But like, you're, I don't know, I didn't, I'm not sure, I can't remember how you feel about that. But I've also had my calcium score done. It was zero. But you're not even saying the calcium score is all that reliable. It's the CT angiogram, which I do think is really, should everybody be getting that? I think at some point it depends. Well, let me back up for a second. So the calcium score is directionally helpful. But as you're alluding to, as I wrote about in the book, 15% of calcium scans give a false negative. So 15% of the time, if you get a zero on your calcium score, it's not actually zero either. There is calcification that's so small it's being missed. That actually happened to me once. Alternatively, you don't have calcium, but you have soft plaque, which is just as problematic, meaning you still have atherosclerosis, even at the level or at the gross resolution of a CT scan. So that's one point I would make. The other point I would make is, you know, I don't believe in doing tests unless the test is going to alter your behavior. So if I'm treating a person who's young and has other risk factors that we deem relevant, I don't necessarily need the CT angiogram because the probability that, you know, a 30 year old is going to have advanced atherosclerosis that's going to change our management might actually be low. So, you know, in your case, having that C, uh, that calcium scan of zero is great news, but I'd want to make sure I knew what your LP little a was, what your ApoB was, and were those things being treated as aggressively as you could tolerate medically? And if they are, then I wouldn't feel the need to repeat those scans or move you to the CT angiogram. And as far as the stress test goes, you know, a stress test is a great test because it's, as its name suggests, putting you under the maximum amount of stress, which is when we can see changes in the heart that um, would would be different in its electrical activity. And those would be real, you know, canary in the coal mine changes for ischemic heart disease. The good news is generally for people who are exercising aggressively, if they're doing it symptom-free, a stress test is not adding a whole heck of a lot in a, in a, in a case like yours. But again, I, I still think the stress test is a valuable test and, and we do use them in, in select patients. Mm. You talk about the four horsemen of death <laughs> and, uh, you know, what's going to get us. We all know something's going to get us, but can you just walk us through what those are? Yeah. The, the four horsemen are, are basically the big chronic diseases that took over. So once medicine 2.0 
ushered in uh, an era of remarkable success against uh, infectious diseases and communicable diseases, which really happened again in the late 1900s and the, the early part of the 20th century, um, we basically started living longer, right? We went from living an average of 40 years to getting into our, you know, eighth decade of life, living into our 70s. And all of a sudden, something happened, which was all of these chronic diseases started to kill us. So the basically, the, the way I think of them is these four horsemen, right? So atherosclerotic diseases, so heart disease and stroke, far and away, number one, cancer, which is not one disease, of course. Cancer is a, a, a herd of diseases that all get lumped in under one umbrella. So breast cancer and colon cancer are totally different diseases, different risk factors, et cetera. Uh, but nevertheless, we think of it as one disease. Neurodegenerative diseases, and when a lot of people think of that, they think, of course, of the most prevalent of these, which is Alzheimer's disease, but that also includes Lewy body dementia, Parkinson's disease, et cetera. And then the third one <clears throat> doesn't directly account for a lot of, you know, lists on the death certificate, but indirectly may be the single greatest contributor of them all. And that is the suite of metabolic diseases that ranges all the way from even just insulin resistance through fatty liver disease, which is an enormous epidemic at this time, uh, all the way up to type two diabetes. So that I, I kind of think of that as a metabolic continuum of disease that again, in terms of actual lives lost on a given year is not an, is not a huge number, but when you have those conditions, your risk of the other three horsemen that I mentioned goes up significantly. Mm, and on that last front, I do think it's interesting. You don't really <laughs> refer to obesity so much in the book. It's about metabolic disorder because you could be thin and have the fatty liver. There, You, you tell right. some harrowing stories in there about cutting people open and seeing, oh my God, this is a thin person who's not a drinker. And there it is. So don't, don't assume you don't have that just because you're not heavy into booze or you're not obese. The metabolic disorder could encompass you. And as Peter points out, it could lead to one of the other three horsemen. So that's right. disconcerting. I, yeah, we, we have this preoccupation with weight right? That, you know, obesity is the big boogeyman. And I don't want to suggest that obesity doesn't come without its problems or that it isn't correlated strongly with some of these other issues. But I also think like we should be smart enough to walk and chew gum at the same time. Like we should be nuanced enough to actually be able to talk about what really is causing the issues. And it's not obesity per se. It is the metabolic derangement that often comes with obesity. But as you point out, is often present without obesity. I think I have a, a figure in the book that I drew that shows the Venn diagram, the overlap of lean people who are metabolically yeah. unhealthy, obese people who are metabolically unhealthy. And interestingly, a lean person who is metabolically unhealthy has worse outcomes than an obese person who is metabolically unhealthy. In other words, there's something really dangerous about a person who can't get fat but goes directly to metabolic unhealth. Now that it's spring, oh, it's so nice to have the warmer temperatures, isn't it? Thank God they're finally here. It is time to get outside and enjoy your backyard. But does your backyard need a makeover? Start with the perfect centerpiece, a Michael Phelps Swim Spa by Master Spas. A Michael Phelps Swim Spa can transform your backyard into an oasis. The Swim Spa is an alternative to a pool with the therapy of a hot tub. Michael Phelps Swim Spas have a water current so you can swim, do aquatic exercises, and have fun with the kids. And because it is heated, you can choose your perfect water temperature and use it all year long in any climate. Michael Phelps Swim Spas by Master Spas come in a variety of sizes to complement almost any yard, even if it's a small one. And this is not a long, intimidated project. In fact, delivery and installation can take less than one day once your space is ready. So don't feel intimidated. Michael Phelps Swim Spas are 100% made in the USA by Master Spas, the world's largest swim spa manufacturer. You are going to love your Michael Phelps swim, swim Spa by Master Spas. Go to masterspas.com, put in the promo code MK to save that $1,000 on a Michael Phelps Swim Spa or 500 bucks on a Master Spas hot tub. That's masterspas.com, promo code MK. Hey, thanks so much for watching. If you like what you just saw, hit the subscribe button for more clips and full episodes.